So welcome back to today's video. I'm doing a tutorial as the title of this video suggests and I'm using some of my favorite Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows. I've been loving those a lot lately and I wanted to do a look that was very me but also something that was easy. It's a bit smoky, it's warm and it's just a me look. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on some of the newer products that I picked up recently that I shared in my haul towards the end of the video. So I will sort of walk you through the eye look and the rest of the face. So if you want to see how to do this entire look, then keep watching. And I have this palette, the Modern Renaissance Eyeshadow Palette, which I love. I think it's worth the money. If you love these types of colors, I think that you will really enjoy this palette because the quality is really, really good. And I also have a quad that I created myself at Sephora. You can select whatever colors you want and put them into a palette like this. And I have these specific colors because... With these shades, I feel like I can do natural looks, barely there looks, really warm tones like I'm doing today, or something really dark and smoky, and this is like the perfect sort of travel companion here, so that's why I've selected these. And I don't remember the names of all of them in here, so as I'm using from this palette specifically, I would just write it up on the screen for you so that you know what they are, because they are magnetic and a little bit of a pain to get out of there. So, to start this look off, I'm going to take an eyeshadow brush, and I'm going to go in with the shade called Tempura which is a matte color. This is from the Modern Renaissance palette. And I am going to use a little bit of this over my entire eyelids as a base. And I do have a little bit of minerals on to help with concealing any veins and discoloration that I may have. And that is all that I have used prior to filming. So I'm going to take that tempura and apply a thin layer of this on to my lids. As you can see that is a very very pigmented color and it's going to help even everything out so that everything really shows up real intense here. Next I'm going to switch to a large fluffy brush. This is a Royal and Lang Nickel, Royal and Lang Nickel <laughs> crease and smudge brush. It looks like this. I believe I got this in my Ipsy bag but just any crease brush that looks like this would work for this look. It's called Burnt Orange. <laughs> Burnt Orange and I was going to say, it looks similar to caramel. That I do know is this shade here. So I'm going to use um, some of the burnt orange and then the caramel as well. And that, as you can see, very pigmented, so you only need a little bit. Tapping off the excess. And I'm going to start by applying this into my crease. And I'm also going to bring this color up a little bit because as I fade up towards the brow bone, it's going to create a soft kind of shadow, a wash of color. And it's going to look much lighter up in this region at, than it does in the actual crease and below the crease. So it's going to create like a nice little border for the eyeshadows. So I'm going to just sort of work this back and forth. And I do really like these brushes. Have any of you used any of the Royal and Land Nickel brushes? Because so far I'm really liking this little mini. So now that I have most of that applied into the crease area. I'm going to take a little bit of the caramel which is a little bit more on the warmer side but equally as pigmented as you can see it's a beautiful shade and I'm going to apply this to my actual crease the same brush and I'm going to just kind of stick a little bit lower as you can see there's a varying difference between the two shades. I'm going to stick a little bit lower like this and then again working that back and forth. And if you need to, you can go back with that same eyeshadow brush that you used to apply your base shadow and go around the edges of it to blend. And I do this all the time as I go to help with blending. Okay, so I'm going to continue working with the same crease brush, but this time I'm going to intensify the caramel shade, which is from my little quad here, before going in with the next color, which is going to add some real depth to this look. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this outer corner here. Now, the next step is to take like a really warm kind of orange and this is called Real Gar. And it looks like that. It's a beautiful shade. So, so pretty. Again, with the same crease brush. I'm gonna tap off the excess and I'm gonna add this. As you can see, it's very, very intense. And I'm going to just make this look very, very warm. And 
Now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is a 231 Luxe Petite Crease Brush from Zoeva. And this is such a good brush. And I'm going to take that Real Gar, same eyeshadow, and I'm going to start working this on the outer corner and intensifying this outer edge here. And then once I have the color placed here on the outer V area, I'm going to just use my brush to follow my natural crease shape. I'm going to use the very tip of the brush to do that. And then I'm going to go back in with that crease brush and a little bit of the burnt orange, just a tiny bit of it, to give myself a little bit more of a kind of glow around this crease area here. And I'm just taking just a tiny bit, tapping off the excess, and I'm going to go right in this upper crease area with it. And I'm being very light-handed. I can barely feel the brush against my crease area, so don't put too much pressure when you're doing this step because these colors are extremely pigmented. And I'm gonna go back in and sort of clean this up. I'm gonna flip my brush over since it's a double-ended using the swudger. I'm gonna take the tempura, which is that light color here, and I'm gonna go under the brow bone. Now for the lid, I'm gonna work on that um, in a minute. I'm gonna mix two shades. So we're going to start working on the lower lashes first and then we'll come back up to the upper lash or the upper lid area. So for this I'm going to go in with a small detail brush and I'm going to start layering colors. I'm going to start with the caramel shade which again looks like this. And then I'm also going to use the same brush that I was using for all of my crease work and more precise and because there's a little bit of eyeshadow left I'm going to use that to blend everything out and also as I do that it's going to put down a little bit of warmth as you can see it adds just a little bit of extra something there and then I'm going to take the uh, burnt orange which is very similar to caramel just a little bit of that here now I did use a little bit of a darker eyeshadow color from my little quad this color here, which it'll be on the screen, I'll write the name of this shade here, but it is a very dark color. It is quite cool. Um, and just to give you an idea, you could use Cypress Umber if you have this palette. Cypress Umber is there, and then this is the one that I'm going to be using. And then again, back in with that brush, and let's soften this out. All right, so now we have to work on the inner corner, and I mix two shades. The first one is called Vermeer, which is in the palette, and um, it is more of a pinky champagne. And then this shade here, which again, I'll put it on the screen, throw my little quad. Here are the swatches of the colors. If you're going to be able to see the difference, one is more of a pinky champagne, one is a little bit more gold. It has a little bit more of a kind of golden sheen, this one, onto the lid. And for that, I'm going to use the MAC 239 to apply that. And I'm just sort of patting so that I don't disrupt any of the other colors that I have. And it also helps keep the intensity of the eyeshadow. Now to give the lids a little bit more of a pop, I'm going to use the Vermeer shade from the Modern Renaissance palette because this has a bit of a more pinky champagne. It's a little bit on the brighter side as far as the tone of color as opposed to the one that I have on my lid. And this is going to go in the very center of my lid. And it's just going to add a little bit of dimension. It's not going to be very intense as far as the contrast between this shade and the one that's on the lid, but it'll give a little bit of something right on the center of the lid area. Then I'm going to go back in with my crease brush, the, the pointed one from Zoeva, and just make sure that everything is kind of blended and doesn't come up too high. And then for the inner corner, I'm going to switch to a Sigma Shader Lid E56 brush, which looks like this. And I'm going to use the Vermeer shade from the palette. I'm going to add a little bit of that to this inner part of the eye. 
and apply that to the highest point of my brow. All right, so before I do my mascara, I thought about doing a little bit of eyeliner in the lower waterline. I normally don't do this, and you guys know that, but I have been really enjoying the Lorac Front of the Line Pro Pencil Liner. This is in the shade Dark Brown, and I use this often just to do a little bit of a smudge liner on the upper lashes, and it works really well. It's very creamy. It doesn't tug. It doesn't pull, and I will show you um, a swatch of it. It's a very beautiful chocolate brown color, and it's just the creamiest like best liner ever. I do like the liquid liner as well. It's the front of the line pro. It's just the same it's the same name, but I think it's just the liquid one. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this onto my waterline. And that's just gonna add a little bit more depth and smokiness, but it's not as intense as using a black. Now if that's what you wanted a little bit more impact, then definitely go for the black. This is so creamy, like literally it glides on the skin and it transfers so well from the pencil to the waterline which is kind of a difficult thing to find because a lot of times when you're using a pencil in that waterline that tends to be a little bit more moist I hate that word <laughs> um, it's hard to get the pencil to actually transfer onto the waterline and stay there and this does just beautifully and I love it highly recommend that you guys try this pencil out very very good all right, it is time for some mascara, and I have picked up a new mascara. I've been testing this out for a few days, and you will have already seen <laughs> the review video because I'm filming it on the same day, and it's the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise, which looks like this, and I will have my review video linked here. All right, so to finish the rest of the face, I need to add a little bit of bronzer, and I'm gonna use the Bare Minerals Warmth with the Morphe E3, and this is just the older style of the Elite collection, but they still make this brush. And I forgot how good this brush is, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth, <laughs> as the name suggests, to my face, because I am looking a little bit pale here. Just a little bit. And I'm not really having a particularly good skin day today. My skin feels a little dry and my minerals just don't look as good as they normally do, which is really weird. Now for highlighter, I want to use this highlight from NYX. This is the Duo uh, Chromatic Illuminating Powder in Snow Rose. So it may look like just a regular highlighter, but it has a pinky kind of glow to it. And I've been meaning to use it. I don't know if you can, the camera's probably not going to pick up the duochrome goodness of this. So I'm using the Eco Tools fan brush for this one. And I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit. Let me see. Um, it's, it's like kind of subtle in a way and you can kind of see a little bit of a pinky kind of glow to it I'm not really sure if I'm really digging it and that's kind of why I wanted to try this duochrome highlighter stuff with one that was inexpensive instead of buying like the Kat Von D ones or anything that's pricey because I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about that so let's do the Mary Lou by the bomb let's go over this highlight a little bit and I'm gonna to switch to my elf small tapered brush. I'm just going to pick up just a touch of this. Well, too much. And I'm going to go over that. And that gives me a bit more of a glow here. Oh, that's a lot. Not enough. I need to like 
and goes like this. Okay, so now for lips, I think I just want to keep it pretty easy on the lips. So I'm thinking about using my Buxom gloss that I showed you guys in my recent haul, and this is in the shade called Trixie. So it's like a peachy, goldeny pink color. I thought it was going to be more pigmented, but against my actual like natural lip color, it doesn't seem very pigmented. It's just mostly kind of like a And I think we're going to stop there because I can see a little bit of that kind of peachy glow to it. So that's the whole look. All right, guys. So that completes the look. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This look obviously is definitely very me. It's stuff that I, or colors I should say, that I love to wear. And I just really wanted to use some more Anastasia eyeshadows. Like I said before, I've been incorporating a few eyeshadows from that brand throughout some looks that I've been doing um, over the last few weeks and I have really enjoyed them. Every time I use them I do feel like the quality just kind of blows me away. It's one of my favorites. I'm not going to say it's my top favorite. That I will not say. <laughs> but it's very very high up there on my list of eyeshadows that I really am enjoying. So I definitely wanted to kind of give you guys my thoughts on those eyeshadows and kind of give you a look using some of them and I will list them down below. Um, I will also list all of the shadows that I have in this quad just in case any of you are interested in in these colors maybe to create a quad yourself but those are very good and I specifically select these shades for a reason just because I can use these two here for a look I can use this um, color for transition and this for some warmth I can use this for eyeliner I could use it in my crease this on the lid I can even use this to highlight my skin with so I think it's a really good um, way to customize a palette that you're actually gonna like and enjoy and you can pick shades that you're actually going to use and make your own palette. So I think it's really cool that you could do that and I really, really enjoy this. And I will also keep you guys posted on the NYX Duo Chromatic Highlighter. I think if I use a more dense packed brush or maybe even with my finger, I might get a more intense duochrome look. I mean, there is a subtle kind of something there, like a pinky kind of glow and mixing it with the balm is really, really pretty. I think it looks really nice on the skin. But this will be more intense if I use a fing my finger or a more dense packed brush. I think you'll get more intense. So if you're wanting to try sort of those dual chrome highlighters that you see out there, don't be afraid to try them because you can make them look a little bit softer and a little bit more, I don't want to say natural because this is definitely not a natural highlighter, let's just be honest. But I think it is a really pretty color. And I'll keep playing around with that and give you guys my thoughts on that. And um, the Buxom, really enjoying this. Even though I recently picked this up, I have tried these before. Not this specific shade, but I do like these. And it's been years since I've actually had a Buxom lip gloss, like the ones that have that sort of tingle. And I'm really enjoying that. So that is everything. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for spending some of your day here with me. Leave me in the comments um, what you want to see next. Any specific tutorials, any more looks with the NYX Ultimate Bright Eyeshadow, anything specific that you want to see, please let me know. I love hearing back from you guys. Have a fabulous time, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.